Hi and welcome to Physics High and today I'm going to do another review of HSC style questions for module 5 type questions which deal with projectile motion, circular motion and gravity. In this case I'm going to be looking at the exams from 2011. So stick around as I go through the answers now. Like all of these types of videos it's worth actually doing the questions first. I'll put a link in the description below and it's also on my website. You can download the paper that will give you all the questions to try beforehand or you can simply pause the video, try the question and then listen to my answer. But before we start please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below and it will help me continue to produce the content that I produce. So let's get started. Our first question is a relatively straightforward question dealing with the idea of weight in a gravitational field. So what we have is a 60 kilogram object that has a weight of 240 newtons on a planet called Planet X. What is the acceleration due to gravity on that planet X? And we've got four options. It simply says that the acceleration on any particular planet is equal to the force that you experience in that gravitational field divided by the mass. The force we're told is 240 newtons. The mass is 60 kilograms. We're going to get four meters per second squared. Relatively straightforward. The next question being question number 15, it's probably a little bit more challenging. We've got a marble that rolls off a one meter high horizontal table with an initial velocity of four meters per second. And how long will it take for the marble to hit the floor? Well, this is a projectile motion type problem. And so we'll have our table and the marble drops off and drops to the ground like so. It's falling at a constant acceleration downwards, but it's also moving horizontally. And so we have the four meters per second going to the horizontal. The time for it to take to go down is independent of its horizontal velocity. In other words, whether it is a horizontal velocity or a zero horizontal velocity, the time will always be the same. What it does horizontally has no significance. And so it's simply a situation of looking at it from a vertically dropping situation. And I always encourage my students to set out VU a, S and T, which of course are your five possible variables that you'll have in a projectile motion problem. We're interested in the time, so automatically I'm going to put T in there. Our displacement is given by one meter, but it's, of course it's falling downward. So we're going to make that negative one meter because it's a downward displacement. Our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Our initial velocity vertically is zero. And now you can see I have U, A, S and T. So the formula is S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. Now, if we substitute everything in, we're going to get negative one on one side. It has zero initial velocity. So all we have left is a half multiplied by negative 9.8 and then T squared. If you rearrange that, you're going to get T squared is equal to one over 4.9. And of course, T therefore becomes 0 0.45 seconds. Looking at our responses, you see our answer is going to be C. Question number 16, a satellite is orbiting a planet at a constant speed. Which of the following statements is correct? Now let's just talk about this, what this means. So here's my planet and here is my lovely satellite going in an orbit and it's going to be a circle. Now what is else can happen? Well, let me just quickly draw the alternative. We could also have, for example, an ellipse as well. So usually satellites will orbit elliptically or in a circular fashion. In fact, all the planets around the sun travel around in ellipses. Now we are told it's at a constant speed. I want to show you what the significance is in between the two options. So the fact is it's a constant speed. That basically means that if we were to calculate the value of the speed, which is the magnitude of the velocity, all we need to do is to say, well, the force due to gravity is equal to the force due to the centripetal force. It's the same thing. And so in essence, what you get is Newton's laws of gravitation, which is G M M over R squared is equal to M V squared over R. Now you can do the rearrangement. You end up getting that the orbital velocity, or at least the magnitude of it, is equal to the square root of G M over R. Now if this V is constant, that can only mean an R is constant. And so the fact is, is that if it's an ellipse, R changes. 
And therefore, if R changes, the velocity changes. And so therefore, it cannot be an ellipse in the traditional sense of an ellipse, that is an ellipse that has an eccentricity of less than one. And so therefore, it has to be a circle. And so thinking through our responses, what we get is this satellite is not accelerating. Well, it's experiencing a centripetal force. So therefore, it has to be accelerating. The velocity is changing due to the fact that its direction is always changing. So A is incorrect. B, the orbit of the satellite has a fixed radius. Well, we just established that. So that is our correct answer. But let's just check the other ones too. C, fuel must be used to supply a constant thrust. Again, this object is basically traveling at a constant speed. And if the force were to be taken away, it would move off at a tangent. In other words, it has inertia. It keeps going in that direction. The only reason it changes direction is the centripetal force. So there is no energy input in there. For starters, the other way of thinking about it is fuel would increase the energy of the system. And since it's in a fixed orbit, we can actually look at the energy of that orbit and notice that the energy does not change. So C is incorrect. And finally, D, the centripetal force on the satellite is balanced by the gravitational force. Now, this is often a question where students will choose that option, even though it's incorrect, because the reality is it's not balanced by the two. The fact is the centripetal force is the gravitational force. They're one and the same thing. So D is incorrect. All right, let's have a look at question number 20. A satellite initially in a low orbit is moved to a new orbit where the gravitational potential energy is half its initial value. So we have, let's say, our planet, our planet Earth, and we are going to move our satellite from, let's say, a position. And I'm just going to draw a big blotch to represent our satellite. So here's my satellite. So now here's my satellite here, and I'm going to move it. So it's half the initial value. So what happens? Well, the formula for the gravitational potential energy is negative g m m over r. So if I divide this value by two, in other words, it's half, what's happened to my radius? Well, that means my radius has actually doubled. Now remember that in dealing with the value here, not the sign. And so that means my radius will double. It'll move to, let's say, this point. So initially, of course, we had a value of r, but now we're moving it to a value of 2r. Now I've doubled the displacement or doubled the distance. What about the gravitational force? Well, the gravitational force is due to g m m over r squared. So therefore the force, because of the radius squared, drops by a factor of four, it becomes a quarter. So now let's look at our responses. We see that it's half the initial force, that is incorrect. Twice the initial force, that is incorrect. Four times the initial force, not correct either. One quarter, well, there's the correct answer. Question 23. So now we're going to into our short response type questions for 2011. A rocket launches a satellite into orbit 350 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The weight of the satellite is 14.0 kilonewtons at launch, and then it's 12.6 kilonewtons when in orbit. And we're given the value for the radius and the mass of the Earth. Now it says, why does the weight of the satellite change? Well, the weight ch changes simply because it's moving away in terms of its gravitational field. The gravitational field strength weakens. So again, I'll draw my Earth over here and I am moving it, let's say, from point X over here to point Y. So Y is our new position. And of course, the gravitational force is less. It's moved away. So the, its distance is increased. So the gravitational force is less. And that is essence what the weight is. So if you invoke the gravitational law formula, that is Fg is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared, which I just discussed previously, then that would explain why the weight changes.
It says then calculate the orbital velocity of this satellite. Now the orbital velocity is equal to V equals the square root of G M over R. This is simply a substitution exercise. So what you have is the square root of 6.67 by 10 to the power of negative 11 multiplied by the mass. Now this is the mass of the planet, which is the mass of the Earth, which is 5.97 by 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, and then divided by the radius. Now this is where students often make silly errors. What is the radius. Well, there's two issues here. The first issue is that we are given a value in kilometers here as the radius of the Earth. The second thing is, is the value that we're given over here of 350 kilometers is actually the altitude from the Earth's surface. So if I therefore substitute the correct radius, I have to have 6,380 kilometers for my radius. I have to add my 350 kilometers for the altitude and then multiply the lot by 10 to the power of 3 because we were in kilometers and it has to be in meters. So if you do that calculation there, you're going to get 7692 meters per second. And that's approximately correct. Most satellites in orbit are in the range from anywhere from 7.5 to around 10 kilometers per second. Now the final thing says explain two effects that a reduction in altitude would have on the motion of the satellite. The first is, if I reduce the altitude, then what happens is that the gravitational force and therefore the centripetal force increases. And as a result, according to the mathematical formula, which is ultimately a derivation from that idea, is that if I reduce the altitude, the velocity increases. So that's the first thing. So by decreasing the radius, you're going to be increasing the velocity. But what other measurable quantity could I have? Well, the period of my satellite, that's in the time it takes to do one complete orbit, will also change. And again, the velocity is going to be equal to 2 pi r over t. So therefore, if my velocity increases and my radius decreases, what happens is the period has to get shorter. And so that's the case. The period actually decreases. It goes around the Earth in a much shorter time frame. And there ends a discussion on module 5 type questions from 2011. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. Please consider supporting me via Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.